Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mr. Hydra and this is the Rust Console Edition. Uh, in this episode of our wiring guide tutorial, episode number one, we're learning all about the components that we're using uh, for most of these builds, your most common components. Uh, I will be doing a future video uh, doing some of the less common components, but for now this, these are the main ones that you're going to be needing and using and I'd like to just go over how they all work so I don't have to do that in the other videos to help keep the video shorter. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start up here in the top left hand corner and we're going to start with the counter. So the counter is uh, pretty basic, it does exactly what it says it does. Uh, it's just counting all of the power that's being sent through it. So currently with my system up on the roof I have 340 power coming in and I have 28 power left over after powering my system. You can see that uh, in order to actually see the pass-through though you have to have it connected to something or you have to have it connected to itself. So in this case it's connected to itself and it shows me 28. So uh, that's a counter. Those are useful so you know how much power is coming in and out of your base. This is a door controller. So the door controllers you have to stick onto your door frames of your doors. I like to put them in the top corners of my doors on the opposite sides of the roll-up doors. Uh, it just always seems to work for me and never lets me down. Uh, when they're supplied power they're going to open doors and then when the power supply is cut off they're going to close the doors and set it to its default state which is closed. Uh, we have three lights here. We have our ceiling light, we have our siren light, and we have a flasher light. Um, all of three, three things do the, the same thing. They provide light in different ways. Uh, this blue one is going to flicker really quickly and show you a blue light. Uh, this is obviously it's a siren light. It's a red light that's going to spin. And this is your ceiling light that's going to provide you with light for your base. Um, now the only difference between these lights is this ceiling light costs two power to run. So just be keep that in mind every time you set up your, your lights. So my five lights that I currently have set up now are running 10 power. So um, the most you can get on a small battery would be these five. Uh, but you want a switch. So really you're going to want four batteries and a switch. And then you'd be all set up. Um, but yeah, so that's your lights. Uh, next we have a Tesla coil. The more power you put into it, the faster it's going to kill the bad guys. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. This is a button. Uh, this button and this pressure pad, uh, when activated, provide their own power. So this will put out one power, and this will put out one power without having been uh, connected to anything else. If you need to have more than one power be put out of these things, because say it's being um, put into a root, uh, an and or switch or another switch after this and then where you want it to go, you do have to hook up some power to it in order to have enough power to run uh, the piece after it and um, whatever it is you're trying to run. Uh, heartbeat sensor. This thing only works by visuals, but it works from a distance. So this will pick you all the way up from three and a half uh, blocks away, uh, which is pretty far. And I typically, if you look at my little setup here, I like to have mine almost about two stories tall. Uh, and I would put this outside of my front door or inside your base or anything like that. But in this case, it's for my uh, door camper system. So you can have it up all the way up to two stories tall and it's still going to pick up people on the ground uh, from three and a half tiles away. So this thing has quite the radius. It's kind of nuts. Um, and it works by when it's triggered, it, it'll trigger itself. It's going to put uh, the power into the power out and only once it's triggered will it put the power to the power out so while it's unactive it's not taking it's not going to kick anything out um, we also have a laser uh, detector so if this is powered every time you walk through the laser detector it's going to uh, set it off and trigger just like a button uh, would or your pressure pad uh, but this requires it to be powered so you need one power going into it uh, and then you need at least another power coming out of it into whatever it is that you're activating. So these do require two power. Uh, 
We have an electrical branch. This is the main thing that you're going to be using all of, all of the time because this thing allows you to control power. So once power comes in from the power in, it's going to be split in two different directions. It's going to prioritize the left-hand side, meaning it's always going to give this side the power first, and then any remaining power that it's been given will be kicked out this side. Um, so you set these up, uh, you can configure these again to whatever power you need. So let's say my lights there, you know, they need 10 power. So I'm going to configure this to 10 power. And then this left side will always kick out 10 power. And then whatever power is left over will be kicked out this side. Uh, but these are always in continuous use. Uh, this is a blocker. So the blocker uh, just allows power to be passed through from the bottom to the top um, un unobstructed. However, if this receives one power from any source, as long as this is receiving one power, it will block this, uh, basically put a little line in here, and it will prevent any power from going from here out of here. Um, and again, this only needs one power. Uh, you have a memory cell. Memory cell is a little bit more complicated, but it's not too, too complicated. So whatever power gets put in here will be put out one of, uh, one of these sides, but only one of these sides. So its default output is to the output, and then you also have an inverted output. So when this memory cell is toggled, it's going to switch over to the inverted output. And then when it's toggled again, it'll be switched back to the output. Speaking of toggle, this is your toggle button. So if you have um, something connected to this, say your button here, every time you push the button, it's going to switch the power back and forth between these. And these two buttons um, pretty much act the same as this one, uh, except you have two different buttons. So this button you can use to set um, your power cell, which means all of your power will come out of your output. Um, and you can push this button, and once you push this button once and set it once, you can push the button a million times and it won't make a difference. Um, it will, all of your power will always come to this output until you use the reset button. Once you reset the power, it's going to kick out the inverted output. Um, and again, once you kick this button or hit the button, you can hit the button as many times as you want after that, and it will not switch this. Um, so the toggle one will switch it back and forth, and then this one's for your inverted output when you want it, and this one's for your regular output when you want it. Um, it's kind of the best explanation uh, I can give for these things, uh, I think. Again, these are these act like a toggle, but one's but specifically for one. So you can't just sit there, because if, if, say this was connected to it, and this system is really important that you don't want uh, people to have access to, you know, roll-up doors, whatever, uh, then you don't want people to sit there and just be able to switch the power back and forth and activate this whenever they want. So you can have two different buttons, so you can split up the buttons uh, at two different sides of your base, or different systems, but you can set up two different buttons on different sides of your base, so they have to have access to both sides of the base in order to switch the power back and forth. Uh, and lastly here, we have probably the easiest one. Uh, this is a root combiner. This only works coming directly from power sources, so generators, wind turbines, or um, uh, solar power. Uh, you can only connect those to these. Uh, this does not use any power. Uh, meanwhile, everything else on here uh, uses one power to work, except for, again, this button uh, and this pressure pad. Everything else on here requires one power to work. Um, the root combiner, however, uh, you won't lose any power coming from your power sources. Um, and we'll, we'll go over how to use your root combiners later on. Um, okay, so we have a splitter. Uh, what a splitter is going to do is it's going to take whatever power you have put in and it's going to evenly distribute them across three, three power uh, sources. Uh, if you only have one power source plugged in, then all of the power being supplied to the splitter, minus one, because the splitter does take power, 
uh, will be automatically kicked out to here. Uh, if you hook up two of these things, whatever power you give to this will automatically split that power between these two minus one. Um, and again, uh, same thing with a third. So it'll split the power evenly between these three uh, minus one. So as a quick example, because uh, this is important, let's say you need to supply each one of these things with two power, right? Uh, a switch and let's say a door controller. So uh, each one of these things need two power. So you need six power and then you need one power for the splitter. However, if you only put in five power, it's only going to give each one of these one power because it cannot evenly distribute five between three. So it's only going to give one power out of each of these. It's going to take one power from itself and then two power is going to be wasted. So you have to make sure that anything that comes off of these needs an equal amount of power to run. Uh, and then you need to make sure that you add all of these up and then add one for your power intake. Um, yeah, so that's how splitters work. Uh, and switches. So these are pretty easy uh, to comprehend. If you get power coming in from A, it will pass through. If you get power coming in from B, it will pass through. And if you have power coming from both A and B, it will also pass through. So anything that you put into this will allow power to pass through. Um, this is basically just so you can combine power sources um, into things, run intricate uh, uh, blueprints. And there's a few other fun things that you can do with this. But basically any power that goes into this will go out regardless of whether or not both of these are activated. Uh, we also have underneath it here, we have our OR switch. So our OR switch is the exact opposite. So it will only allow power to go through if one of these are active, and only one. So if A is receiving power and B is not, the power will go through. If B is receiving power and A is not, the power will go through. If both A and B are receiving power, then no power will be set. And this is your uh, XOR switch, which sort of is very similar to the OR switch, um, except it's the opposite of that. This has to have both power coming through it. So both A and B have to have power. And if you don't have power coming through both, you're not going to get any power through your power output. So um, both needs to have power. Only one can have power, and one or the other can have power. It doesn't matter. So that's how uh, these switches work. And then you have two more uh, basic ones. You have your, um, your on-off switch. So it's very simple, on, off. Uh, and then you have two extra ones. So you have two other buttons. So say you want to be able to run a system from another part of the base, but you don't want to have to run all the way to where this uh, switch is in order to do that. Or let's just say you want to have this to power on uh, when you're being rated. So what you can do is you can set an RF frequency thing to it. Uh, again, this is a little more advanced, but you can have an RF uh, monitor hook to it, uh, which is set to the same frequency as a pager. So if you're outside your base and you're seeing uh, that it's being rated, you can pull out your pager, hit your pager, and this button will turn on, powering whatever it is, uh, whatever raid protection you have afterwards. Um, and then you have your timer. Your timer also has a toggle on switch. Um, so again, you can do the same thing from a distance. But the timer is exactly that, a timer. So once this gets activated, it will allow power to run through for however long you set it. And then as soon as the timer ends, uh, the power will no longer go through and um, the power gets shut off. So these right here, these are your, your basic, most common 
um, things that you're going to use on your base and they're used all over the place so once you guys familiar, uh, familiarize yourself with these then using them becomes super easy and uh, totally worthwhile inside your base. So uh, that's it for the first episode here um, of our component guide, our common component guide. I hope this helps you guys. And uh, in the next episode, we're going to be focusing on um, collecting power. How do we collect power? What's the best way to bring it in? Um, yeah, so I hope you guys join me for that episode. Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.